8.3 Perimeter and Area The perimeter P of a two-dimensional figure is the sum of the lengths of the sides of the figure, meaning we just take the sides all around it, what encloses it, and just add it all together. The area A is the measure of the region within the boundaries of the figure, so inside is area, outside is perimeter. Here are all the formulas for perimeter and area, so rectangle, square, parallelogram. All of these you can treat the same, because every square is a rectangle, every parallelogram is a rectangle. However, not every rectangle is a square, not every rectangle is a parallelogram. So these are all interchangeable, all three of these. Uh, length times width, you can also see base times height, you can also see x times y, they all just mean take two sides and multiply them together. Our triangle area is half base times height, and a trapezoid is one half times height, all times base one plus base two. Example one, lacrosse field sod. Rob wishes to replace the grass on a lacrosse field. One pallet of Bethel Farm sod costs $360 and covers 480 square feet. If the area to be covered is a rectangle with length of 360 feet and a width of 228 feet, determine the area to be covered with sod, determine how many pallets of sod Rob needs to purchase, and determine the cost of sod uh, that you need to purchase. So first thing we need to do is find the area, and we're working with a rectangle. We also know we're working with a rectangle because it gives us two dimensions, a base and a height. It doesn't say that it's a triangle, so when we're given those two dimensions and it tells us it's a rectangle, then we, it's a rectangle. So let's find our length and our width. So our length, they said, was 360 feet. Our width, they said, was 228 feet. All we do is just plug them in. So we have our length, which is 360. Our width, which is 228. Use your handy-dandy calculator. And that's a, a big thing with this chapter. Use your calculator. It's just why multiply these numbers and, you know, have room for error? Use your calculator. And we get 82,080 feet squared. It's squared because it's two dimensions. So if it was cubed, it's three dimensions. If it's four, if it's t um, four, it's to the fourth dimensions. If it has five sides, it's to the fifth dimension, and, and infinitely can go on. All right, now we need to know how many pallets do we need. So it told us that one pallet covers 480 square feet. So when we're trying to find how many things we need or the cost per ounce or the cost per unit, it's going to be the area we have covered or need to cover over how much does one pallet cover. So the area we need covered, that's from part A. That's 82,080 feet squared. And we're going to divide that by how much is per pallet, and that's 480 feet squared. Since they both have feet squared, they cancel. That's a common unit. So 82,080 divided by 480, we get 171 pallets. So you need 171 pallets to cover this field. If you need 171 pallets, how much is this going to cost you? It told us that one pallet costs $360. So if we need 171 of them, we're just going to multiply those two numbers together. So our total cost, it cost $360 per pallet. And we need 171 pallets, so 360 times 171. And we get $61,560. So that's how much it's going to cost to resod this field. 
Pythagorean theorem. I know you've seen this before. Let me tell you some cool stuff about Pythagora. So first of all, and you can look up everything I'm saying, Pythagora really didn't exist. He's not a real person. There is actually no evidence that this person existed. So how did he came to be? Well, the people who were Pythagora, uh, like it was a group of people who did science and stuff like that, and math and philosophy, uh, they kind of just created this one person to be the leader of the group, but he didn't actually exist. You can look it up. Mathematicians and historians agree with this. Also, something interesting about Pythagora is without Pythagora, we wouldn't have musical scales. Pythagora actually created musical scales. Also, a whole bunch of other things like Pythagora, that group of people, really helped advance math and science and philosophy. So let's talk about the Pythagorean theorem. The sum of the square of the lengths of the legs of a right triangle equals the square of the length of the hypotenuse, which is just saying leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse, hypotenuse squared. We're used to seeing that as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Symbolically, if a and b represent the lengths of the legs and c represents the length of the hypotenuse, that's how we can say a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and they're all lowercase. Uppercase stands for angle. Lowercase stands for side. If you ever find yourself crossing a moat, because we have all these moats here, I mean... We kind of do, right? We have a lot of water here. But anyways, if you ever need to cross a moat, you're going to figure out how tall of a ladder or how long of a ladder you're going to need. The moat surrounding a castle is 18 feet wide, and the wall by the moat of the castle is 24 feet high. See the figure? If an invading army wishes to use a ladder to cross the moat and reach the top of the wall, how long must the ladder be? So that's what it's asking. How long must the ladder be? So we're looking for this one right here. We know that this is a right angle. How do I know that this is a right angle? Because that's the only time you're allowed to use the Pythagorean theorem is if you're working with a 90 degree triangle. I know it is because the land meets buildings at a 90 degree angle. Other than the Leaning Tower of Pisa, that's a whole different story. But every other building meets the land perfectly perpendicular at a 90 degree angle. So across the 90 degree angle, that's the hypotenuse. So we're actually trying to find the hypotenuse. We don't know it. And we're saying the hypotenuse stands for C. All right, so since I know that this is a 90 degree triangle, we are allowed to use A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So what we know we're trying to find is the hypotenuse, which we say is C. Now, A and B, those are interchangeable. It doesn't matter what leg is what leg. They're just both legs. So we're going to say our first leg is at the bottom. So we're going to say that's A and that's 18. And B is going to be the other leg, which is 24. So 18 squared, we get 324. 24 squared, we get 576, and that's going to equal C squared. 324 plus 576, that's 900. So we have 900 equals C squared. We're actually not allowed to have squared. We just want C. So the opposite of squaring is square rooting. The square root of 90 or, or of, uh, 900, we get 30. So that means you need a 30-foot ladder in order to cross the moat. A circle is a set of points equidistant from a fixed point called the center. A radius r of a circle is a line segment from the center of the circle to any point on the circle. A diameter of a circle is the line segment through the center of the circle with both ends uh, end points on the circle. The circumference is the length of the uh, simple closed curve that forms the circle. So radius is center to the outside. Diameter is all the way across, and circumference is around. Let's compare pizza prices. Victoria wishes to order some pizza. They can choose among two deals at the hut. The first deal is two medium pizzas, which are 12 inch in diameter for $5.99 each. The second deal is one large pizza for $7.99, which is 14 inches in diameter. Which deal should they order to get the most from their money? So we all see these deals at Domino's and Pizza Hut. Let's figure out which one is the better deal in the long run. So we have two deals. 
our first deal is saying that we need to get two pizzas. They're 12 inches and they're $5.99 each. So we need to buy two pizzas. Each pizza is uh, has a diameter of 12 inches. And when we buy them, each pizza is $5.99. Our second deal, we only need to buy one large pizza. And when we buy it, it's for $7.99. And it's 14 inches in diameter. So what we're looking for is how much pizza do you get per pizza? So we want to know how much are you going to be able to eat? So we need to find the area. Because that's what you're eating. When you're eating a pizza, you're eating the area. So we need to find the area. That formula is pi r squared. So in order to do our pizza deals, we actually need to use the radius and not the diameter. So a radius is just half of the diameter because that's what a circle is. A radius is just halfway from the center. So to get our radius, we just have 12, that's 6. To get our radius, we have 14, and that's 7. So now that we have our radius, we can figure out how much area do we have per pizza. So we have area equals pi r squared. Our r is 6. So that's 36 pi. 36 times pi, we get 113.1 inches squared. That's just one pizza, though. In this deal, we need to buy two pizzas. So we need to figure out it, how much area is two pizzas. So we just multiply by two. So 113.1 times two pizzas, and we get 226.2 uh, inches squared. Now I need the cost. Each pizza is $5.99. But you're ha you have to buy two of them. So since we have to buy two, we're going to do two times five ninety nine, and that means we're spending eleven dollars and ninety eight cents for both of these pizzas. So we want to find per bite. If we're eating two hundred twenty six point two inches of uh, squared inches of pizza, and it costs me eleven ninety eight, how much am I paying per bite? So it's always cost over what's your area or what are you trying to find or your volume. So our area and our cost. So our cost is 11.98. It's going to be over our area, which is 226.2. Please use your calculator. And we get 0 0.05296. So that means it costs us about 5 cents per bite to eat this pizza. That's, that's important information there. Now we need to do the same thing, but with our second deal. So our second deal, we only have to buy one pizza. It has a diameter of 14, which is a radius of 7, and it costs $7.99. So we still need to find our area. So area equals pi times 7 squared. So that's 49 pi. 49 times pi, we get 153.9 inches squared. We only need to buy one pizza with this deal, so I don't need to do anything more. That's the area of my pizza. So we take how much it cost, which is $7.99, and we divide it by our area. And we get 0 0.05191. So the least money is the second deal. Now, you're, you're saying, well, it's only 0 0.001 cent off because this is 0 0.052, this is 0 0.051. So it is cheaper. The second deal is cheaper. But what if you're talking about buying 100 pizzas? That's, that's money you're saving. Or what if you buy uh, your company 50 pizzas a week for pizza day every week? 
you see how it can add up very quickly. And just to let you know, the large deal is always cheaper than the uh, two for medium pizzas. All right, determining the shaded area. Determine the shaded area, use the pi key on your calculator and round your answer to the nearest hundredth. So we have two shapes. Our first shape is a parallelogram. And our second shape is a circle. So what it's really asking is, say you have a piece of fabric and you're, you're cosplaying and you're making a costume with your favorite character and you need to cut a hole inside the fabric. How much fabric do you have left? That's what we're trying to find. So the first thing we're going to do is find the area of both shapes. So a parallelogram, that's base times height. A circle, that's pi r squared. So we first need to find the base and the height of our parallelogram. So the base, that one's easy. Right here, it's just 10. However, the height's a little more tricky because this is what represents the height. Now, if you look, that's the diameter of the circle. If the radius is 2, the diameter is 4. So our height is 4 inches. So 10 times 4, we get 40, sorry, 40 feet squared. Feet is the terms we're using. Now let's find the area of our circle. So we have pi r squared. The radius of our circle is 2. So we have 4 pi. And it says to use pi on your calculator. So that means you just press in the pi key. So 4 pi. And we get 12.57 feet squared. So now we need to take the circle out of the parallelogram. So the circle is 40, and we need to take out the circle. So 40 minus 12.57, uh, we get a total remaining area of 27.43 feet squared. The reason why we're working with two decimal places this whole time is because it told us nearest hundredth. Hundredth is two decimal places. Applying lawn fertilizer. Mary plans to fertilize her lawn. The dimensions of her lot are given in the figure. One bag of fertilizer costs $29.95 and covers 5,000 feet squared. Determine how many bags uh, Mary needs and how much it will cost. So we're fertilizing the lawn. We don't fertilize the pool. We don't fertilize the house. We don't fertilize the driveway. We don't fertilize the rose garden because roses, roses have different fertilizer than lawns. So we need to find the area and then take away the pool, the house, the driveway, and the rose garden. It's very similar to example four. So we need to find the area of the whole thing and then the little pieces and then take all the little pieces out of the whole lot. So we need, first need to find the area of the lot. So the lot is rectangular because we can see it, 150, 180. So we have 180 times 150, and we get 27,000 feet squared. So the lot is 27,000 feet squared. All right, let's just move on. I'm going to do the pool next. Why? Because that's the first thing I see. So the pool is a rectangle. So we have 20 times 30, and we get 600 feet squared. Next, we have the house. The house is a rectangle, so we have 60 times 40, and that's 2,400 square feet. All right, then we have the driveway. The driveway is another rectangle, so 40 times 16, and we get 640 square feet. And last but not least, we have the rose garden. So the rose garden is a circle. 
So because it's a circle, that's pi r squared. So we have pi, and we need to find the radius. So we're given a diameter. So if the diameter is 24, we find the radius by halving the diameter. So we get a radius of 12. So that comes out to 144 pi. And 144 pi, we get 452.39 feet squared. All right, so now that we have the area of everything, let's take out the pool, the house, the driveway, and the garden from the entire lot. So we're going to have 27,000 minus 600 minus 2,400 minus 640 minus 452.39 and we get the total area of 22,907.61 square feet so that's how much lawn Mary has now that we have how much we have we need to figure out how many bags do we need of this So it told us that each bag holds 5,000 square feet. So it's always what you have over what is needed. So what we have, the area is 22,907.61, and each bag holds 5,000. So when you plug that into your calculator, you're going to get like 4 point something. You're going to get 4.58. However, when you buy something, I can't buy half of a bag. So you have to buy five bags. You have to just, you're going to have a little extra, you have to buy five bags. If we have to buy five bags and each bag costs $29.95, we're just going to multiply by $29.95. And we get our cost is $149.75. So it's going to cost Mary about $150 to fertilize her lawn. All right, before we do anything, we always need to make sure that all the units are the same. So if we look at Mary's lawn in her house and her pool, it's all feet. If we look at this parallelogram, it's all feet. If we look at this example, it's all inches. If we look at this example, it's all feet. If we look at this example, it's all feet. So we need to make sure that all the dimensions are the same, meaning feet, it has to be all feet, yards, it has to be all yards. So let's figure out how do we switch if they're not the same. So we need to convert one square foot to square inches. So before we talk about square feet and square inches, let's just bring out one foot. One foot is 12 inches, but it's saying we need squared. So guess what? We just square it. So one foot squared is one foot squared. 12 inches squared is 144 inches squared. So one foot squared is 144 inches squared. This is actually the rule, the standard. So this is what you use to figure out everything from here on out. So this is like the conversion. So it's like how I know four tablespoons is a quarter cup. They're different units of measurement, but they equal the same thing. So one square foot is actually 144 square, square feet. All right, so for part B, let's convert 300 and, or 37 square feet to square inches. So this is the rule. This is our rule. So we're going to take 37 and just multiply it by 144. And when we do, we get 5,320 inches squared. So feet to inches, we always multiply because there's more inches than feet, right? There's 12 in one. So that's why it's a big number. If we want to go inches to feet, we actually divide because it's the direct opposite. So let's convert 
432 inches squared to inch uh, to square inches. So we want to convert 432 and the rule of thumb is 144. So since we're going bigger, we need to divide by 144. And when we do, we get 3 feet squared.